Guys, for the past few years, I've been making things with electronics uh, quite a lot now. So you can see we've got here uh, LED katana, another katana with more LEDs. And now I just spent the past month making this crazy diorama with a Tengen figurine. It's got like three different figurines in there actually. It's got the Tengen cursed demon himself which I made actually removable and you can see there's got LEDs here, here, here and loads on the base, on the portal itself, on the emblem, on the symbol and on the pedestals here, not pedestals, what are they called? Um, I don't know, here as well. Basically I'm using a lot of LEDs lately and I'm doing a lot of electronics work so whether it comes to making a power shower work, uh, doing some in-house lighting, I've got, got lighting going around everywhere in my room, in the studio uh, in the hallway, in the kitchen, you know, I got them everywhere. I do a lot of electronics work actually now and I do a lot of fixing of things. Anyway, uh, my point is I require some tools. So I was previously using this uh, multimeter and this company reached out to me called um, Kai Wheat, seeing if I want to review one of their products. So this is a different multimeter, it is smart. And it is very smart, I don't know, um, but we'll see. So basically, I think the main pro difference with this to this is the wheel. So, for example, say I want to read a voltage, I have to make sure I select the correct one so it displays correctly. Uh, basically, moving the decimal point across the screen. And then, say I want to re read the resistance, I go to the ohms. And the same kind of principle, I would have to switch it to the correct uh, point so it displays the decimal point in the correct position. Then I have continuity, and then it's got temperature, it's got ba basically quite a few different things that I can use to make sure that I get the job done correctly. Right, so let's get into opening this up, and we're going to do some tests with this, as i got a lot of electronics on me, and we could do some comparisons, perhaps. Okay, wheat. We've got a large instruction manual, it's quite thick actually. I don't often need them until I cannot do something with it. Then I usually Google the problem anyway. Okay, so we've got loads of different cables here. Even got one that goes to USB. I assume it charges by USB. Let's see if it comes any batteries, does it? Cool thing about multimeters is they, they don't really use much electricity. So I only had to replace this batteries maybe once at the max. I don't actually remember doing it. Wonder how the battery would last on this one. So we've got that on screen. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's resistors actually. That's not even batteries. Maybe this is uh, probably charged with DC 5 volts. Is this perhaps charged with uh, the USB cable? So it's fuses, not resistors, I believe. On. Oh, that's the on button, I believe. Looks like you hold it. Oh, it's a very nice display. <sighs> so what is it reading? That's reading the temperature of the room. Wow. 20.4 degrees, that's very cool. DC voltage by the looks of it, and that changes through what's it doing. Very nice screen, I very like, like that a lot. That's ohms, voltage, ohms. Not sure what this is, this like wireless signal. I believe there's continuity. You know what, let's connect the cables and see what we got. Oh, it has a little protection pins for them. Input and common, I believe, so when we touch them. I think that's continuity. So I think I'll actually read through the manual of what does what, but I just noticed that this has a flashlight as well, so that's really cool, really handy. So if you hold the cell button for two seconds, it turns on the flashlight, very handy. So in this page of the manual, it looks like we've got every description of what each icon does and it looks like it also has a non-contact voltage detection which is very useful if you want to find live current in the walls for example. The NCV, non-contact voltage sensor, would be right here. So let's have a look if it picks it up well. So what do I have powered? I have this 12 volt DC power supply, it's working. So obviously the text, I'm not sure what the H means. Oh, the text are quite far away as well. L, hi. 
Okay, so what about walls? So we've got some here going. So I'm wondering if it only picks up. I've got a live cable here. It doesn't pick it up here, does it? So the continuity is doing its job. I wonder what the difference between these two is because on my old multimeter, these two modes were categorized as one. So yeah, for the temperature reading, let's try that. So we've got a temperature probe here. And connect the red to input and black to common. And what's going on here so it's picking up the temperature here straight away 24 C but it's labeling it as this I thought the specific temperature reading would be the CF so 24 C and 65 Fahrenheit Celsius and Fahrenheit um, it was displaying in that mode in the this area but it works here just fine so see, it's picking up here. Maybe that's a completely different reading here anyway. But if we switch it to here, this is the room temperature, 24 degrees. So if we put that up, see the temperature is increasing straight away. Seems to be working very well. So that is very useful to have if you want to measure the temperature of something. Yep, that's working very nicely. Okay, how about we actually have a look at something more interesting like this massive diorama that I've been working on for the past month or so. So make sure it's set down here. And you can see we've got a lot of wires here and we've got just two chipboards here. They're not over the top. This is basically a controller for Bluetooth for the LED strips and this is a buck converter. So we've got two different voltages here, actually a few more. So this buck uh, converter converts 12 volts into five volts down the line. And from the 5 volts, it will go down to, I think, 5 volts as well into the LED strip itself. So let's just see if it's doing its job. And I'm going to connect the DC power supply into the back here that are connected here. And we've got 12 volts. And if we go on the other side, so now it should step down to 5 volts. There we go, 5 volts, yeah, it's reading nicely. So you see the decimal point does adapt to what you need to see. If it was, I assume, 120 volts, the decimal point would appear here. So we do have a capacitor in here as well, and that is in case we get any over voltage spikes. When you're going from 12 volts into 5 volts, when you turn it on and off, it might spike. So let's go into capacitance mode and see if it's reading it correctly. So black is on black. And right here. And it's reading 0 0.034. And I'll be honest about the capacitor. I don't actually know what that measurement means because all I know is that I need it in case the buck converter spikes over 12 volts. So the capacitor would absorb the excess voltage. But all I know is that the multimeter is reading the capacitance, so that's fine with me. I'll move on from that. I'm not sure why on my initial test I felt like this continuity uh, reading was a bit slow feels pretty fine now but it seems rather fine now so I'm gonna continue using this multimeter and see how I get on with it so you'll probably see this multimeter in a lot of my videos actually another thing that I actually like about this smart meter of this one this is much more compact just look how nice and tiny it is it's got a little nice stand here as well I mean this previous one had a nice stand as well but I didn't really use it because it's so chunky to be honest Another thing that I've been recently have to do is uh, work on my power shower, so I had to replace the solenoid and to test its functionality I had to measure the resistance of it, so another cool thing is I can actually use this hole as a way of hanging this. And what I'm going to do is I have this set to resistance mode, you can see here, here, and then get the two pins and touch negative to positive to test the solenoid and it's reading 3.517 and that's what it's supposed to be reading and you can see the decimal point appeared after the first number so that's nice and we can also check the voltage here as well which is a live wire that should be around 240 volts okay 
So the electricity is on, so we've got power coming in on this side here. And for high voltage, it's not really supposed to touch them for more than 50 seconds. So we're just going to see it and see if I get blown up. Okay, so we've got the negative reading already. And see, it's put... Why is it not picking up? See, in the manual, it does say that the smart feature is supposed to be able to switch between DC voltage, AC, resistance, continuity, and it selects the range with the best resolution automatically. So perhaps it wasn't in auto mode, it was just actually stuck on the DC in the manual mode, perhaps, like this now. When we go to left and right, it's in the manual mode, and to access the auto features, we need to press the auto button, not left and right, but the auto itself. See the smart is now enabled which will pick up the DC, AC, continuity, resistance etc. It does say do not measure voltages higher than 1000 DC or 750 AC volts. For something that's high voltage like the AC line which is 240 volts, you do not want to use something like this. So it's actually good that it came with its own uh, probes because mine have two connections so if I'm using the probes that are sharp and pointy uh, I don't want the crocodile tips touching and bridging the line causing a shortage so let's get rid of these and use the ones it came with and I'm gonna set this to manual mode which is bolt and you see at the moment it's set on DC so I want to change it so I could do that by pressing cell and it changes to AC alternating current however these pins they're not sharp enough so what we can actually do is actually take them off and now they're much thinner and now we can actually reach the terminal block so I actually breached the connection before and I blew the fuse but yeah the power shower is obviously fused we've got a 3 amp fuse which blew up and I replaced it so now it's functional again so let's test it so red to the and there and it will pick it up in a second 240 volts and 50 hertz which is reading correctly so that's a good reading and we know it works but yeah I'm not going to use the auto feature for that because I would like to make sure it's set on volts so the continuity mode doesn't actually bridge the connection by accident I think I'm going to wrap this video up now because I don't want to go too in depth about features that I won't use but the features that I do use I think I'll continue using with the new one rather than my old one I'm going to keep the old one just as a backup but the new one is quite interesting I like how slim it is I love the display, it's very nice and I do like that I won't have to switch between the toggling system of the decimal point I think that is much better to see the true resolution using the screen itself and let it decide which resolution to show me I'm not sure about the smart function in terms of switching between continuity, voltage, resistance, etc. I can just press left or right, uh, I'd rather do that to be honest. But yeah, the size is really an attractive feature to me and then I can display it like that. But this one has a little hole, so I can hang it up. But yeah guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to get the product yourself, it will be in my description, so feel free to check it out. Till next time, peace.